I lost my mom at a young age and was raised by my single dad. We had our awkward phases, but my dad and I got along pretty well. Dad, always putting family first, focused his attention entirely on me. Especially after I entered the workforce, he became really concerned about my marital prospects. Through my dad, I met a guy from a prominent family. However, the guy's mom looked down on me and my single dad for being less than. My family-focused dad had the ultimate payback on the snooty family. In the end, I found happiness with the man I love. This is the story of how I, raised by a single dad, grabbed hold of happiness. I was born to parents who loved each other deeply. My dad was always busy with work and came home late, but he always helped mom with household chores like cleaning the shower room. Mom was a gentle soul who would lighten up any room she was in. Our weekends were filled with family picnics and the sandwiches mom made. While I was running around on the grass, my parents would be chatting and filming me. Dad would somehow find time to take off work to attend my school events with mom. I loved both of them, and life was good. Then one Sunday everything changed. Where's mom? When is she coming back? Mom went out shopping and never returned. Mom has gone to a faraway place. It might be a while before you see her again. I was too young to understand that mom had passed away. She had tried to help an elderly lady at a railroad crossing, and they were both hit by a train. Once I could comprehend the accident, Dad told me, that's just like Mom, always kind. Life for Dad and me started anew, just the two of us. After Mom passed away, Dad went to great lengths to raise me all by himself. He'd get up early to make lunch for sports day and never miss any of my school events. But as I grew older, I started to miss Mom and even had fights with Dad. Once I hit high school, the typical teenage girl worries caused me to grow distant from Dad. My dad's concern for me started to feel more like a burden, and there were times when I said really hurtful things to him. Why do you keep asking about what happened at school? It's annoying. Leave my life decisions to me. So what if I'm late? So what if I'm late? Why do you care so much? Just leave me alone. Why do you keep asking about what happened at school? It's annoying. Leave my life decisions to me. Looking back, I realized Dad was always thinking of me because Mom wasn't there anymore. Maybe I was a bit hard on myself back then. I heard later that my dad had been worrying about me, even going so far as to consult his colleagues and my mom's old friends. Looking back, I wish I'd been a bit nicer to him. Sometimes his excessive concern about my education and school life would get on my nerves and I'd act out. But thanks to his support, I got into my top choice university. When I got to college, I understood where he was coming from and things between us smoothed out. I apologized for my teenage rebellion, and he laughed and forgave me. Around the time I started college, Dad started coming home a bit earlier. I often cook dinner ahead of time, and we eat together after reheating it. By then, we could also reminisce about Mom. I remember how happy Hugh always looked when he heard about my college life. Come to think of it, ever since Mom passed away, He's only ever wanted to hear about my life, never talking about his work or complaining about anything. College was a good chapter for me and Dad. I joined the tennis club and really enjoyed it. I even confessed my feelings to a cool senior and had a relationship. When I told Dad about my boyfriend, he was both excited and cautious, saying, Be careful, let me know if anything happens. Marriage comes after graduation. Unfortunately, that relationship ended within six months due to misunderstandings. But I'm still in touch with Nicholas and Olivia, classmates I met through the tennis club. It was a really close-knit and fun group. I had always dreamed of becoming a teacher. After college, I was able to fulfill that dream. I was four years into my career as an elementary school teacher. I'd been living on my own ever since I started teaching. Seeing my dad's face after such a long time was a shock. He seemed to have aged so much in just a year. His face was wrinkled and he had more gray hair. Even picking up a magazine seemed to be a struggle for him. Dad, let me get that for you. I offered helping him around the house. He told me not to, but I went ahead and changed all the light bulbs in the house. Both he and I felt his decline. Hey, Lily, how about settling down? You haven't dated anyone since you broke up with your tennis club senior. Give me peace of mind. I'm getting old, you know? I was of the mindset that marriage could wait. 
yet I could sense Dad's concern for me. So I decided to meet just once with the person Dad wanted to introduce me to. The location was a private lounge in a luxury hotel. The room was opulent beyond anything I'd ever seen. The man I was meeting was wearing an incredibly expensive-looking suit, and his mother Elizabeth, dressed in an equally lavish dress, was with him. According to Dad, the guy was from a prestigious family that's been around for over 200 years. His name was Christopher. Christopher's family owned several major businesses in the region, and they were a family-run enterprise. Dad said, only someone of this caliber is a match for Lily, with a chuckle. But honestly, I felt intimidated. I just want to marry a normal guy. I wondered where Dad found such a guy. His connections must be incredible. These thoughts crossed my mind as I finished my greetings. Nice to meet you. I'm Lily. Thank you for having me today. However, Elizabeth immediately started commenting on my lack of a mother. It's so sad you were raised by just your father. We raised Christopher as a couple. A family needs both parents, she said repeatedly, pointing out my motherless upbringing. Christopher was very quiet whenever his mother spoke, nodding in agreement. He must be a mama's boy. When the topic turned to careers, Elizabeth seized the opportunity to boast about her son. Christopher will eventually be a CEO, you know? He'll be in charge of multiple companies, she said. And that's because we, as a married couple, raised him, she said. Throughout the conversation, she frequently criticized the concept of a single father. Moreover, when I mentioned being a teacher, she said, Oh my, it's so unfortunate for the children that you, raised by a single father, are a teacher. I'd move my kids to another school. They really have lax hiring criteria for teachers, don't they? Honestly, the conversation was far from enjoyable, and even the luxurious meal tasted awful when shared with Christopher and Elizabeth. I later heard that Elizabeth is domineering towards everyone and brags about her prestigious family. I wondered how long I have to endure this company. Every time she opened her mouth, it was about how she was destined to marry into a prestigious family, or become a CEO, or how being a single father was some kind of issue. I was over it. What really hurt was when she seemed to criticize my dad, who worked so hard to raise me on his own. Things reached a breaking point when Elizabeth started complaining about my job. At this point, there's no use in talking further. We're leaving. I'm looking forward to the news tomorrow morning. With that, my dad and I left the fancy hotel lounge. Elizabeth was shouting something as we left, but dad closed the door firmly behind us, ignoring her. I can tolerate her looking down on me, but I won't stand for her demeaning you, Lily. Even after we got home, dad was still fuming. The next morning, it turned out that Dad's threat about the news wasn't empty. You see, my dad is the chairman of one of the country's leading corporations. But unlike that woman, he never bragged about it. He didn't even mention it during the introduction, keeping quiet about his influential role. After that disastrous dinner, Dad started the process of acquiring part of Christopher and Elizabeth's company. This sudden move sparked internal strife within their organization, splitting people between our side and theirs. Many employees had already been dissatisfied with their family-run business, which ultimately fell apart because of Dad's actions. In the end, it seems that Christopher, his father, and his mother were ousted from their roles as heads of the corporate group. Elizabeth took great pride in being from a prestigious family and owning a corporate conglomerate. When her family empire started crumbling, word got around that she couldn't handle it and had a breakdown. I'm sorry for the unpleasant experience. Let's stop with these matchmaking setups. Lily, find someone you love and marry when you're ready, Dad later told me. He never again pushed me to consider marriage. I was also wary of any more introductions for potential marriage partners. But surprisingly, I found myself getting married sooner than expected. I mentioned the whole matchmaking debacle to Nicholas and Olivia, friends from my social circle, Nicholas suddenly confessed his feelings for me. Actually, I've liked you for a while. I'd rather you date me than be set up with some stranger. Nicholas had liked me since college, but gave up because I was dating someone else back then. He hadn't found the right timing to confess until he heard about the matchmaking, which apparently spurred him into action. Lily, will you marry me? I promise to make you happy. After dating for about six months, 
Nicholas and I decided on a rushed marriage. Nicholas isn't from a prestigious family, nor is he wealthy. He's just an average guy from an average family working at an average company. When dad introduced me to the son of a prestigious family, he said, Lily needs someone of this caliber to match her. I was worried that he'd oppose Nicholas, but all he did was tear up and say, if Lily chose him, I trust her judgment. Make my daughter happy, take good care of her. Our wedding was filled with college friends, a lot of other friends, and work colleagues. Seeing me like that, Dad looked genuinely happy. Fast forward a few years. Nicholas and I have been blessed with a son and a daughter. We don't live with Dad, but we make it a point to visit him during extended holidays with the kids. Dad told me he's finally at ease now that I'm standing on my own two feet. When he sees his grandchildren, his face lights up even more than usual. I'm so glad that we can bring joy to Dad by showing him our kids. Turns out Dad had been secretly frequenting a bar and ended up remarrying one of the staff there. I was initially shocked that he remarried after 60, but I'm happy he found new joy. Dad claims he's still got plenty of steam left, but lately he seems to enjoy mentoring the next generation. As for that one's prestigious family, they might have been ousted from their business, but they still have money, so they're probably still around somewhere. However, because Elizabeth was always boasting and acting high and mighty, they must have accumulated a lot of ill will. They might be living quietly and hiding now.